Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I wanted to do something a little different. So at the time of recording this, it's currently January 17th, but well not January 17th, December 17th. So you'll be seeing this sometime in mid-January and um, I, because there's the holiday season coming soon, I don't have as much time to work on more long form content. I still have a few things in mind for this month. But uh, I did want to try something interesting that I don't think I can really do as a scripted video since there are way too many champions to go over. And essentially what I'm going to do today is talk about um, ranking every single champion's ultimates based on like how good they are, how versatile, whether or not other champions would want to have them, and so on. I thought it'd be interesting because I'm an avid viewer of Smash Ultimate content and um, there's a YouTuber named Esam who's doing this for all the different moves in that game. Basically ranking like, you know, the best uh, neutral B, the best up air, the best down smash, the best forward tilt, things like that. And I thought it would be interesting to do it for League and to see if you guys would be interested too. So here's what we have for today. We have the S tier, like, you know, the best of the best, the creme de la creme. Uh, actually, wait a second. This should be... Here we go. Um, so you have S tier, then A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, F tier, uh, and not applicable. Not applicable is for any champion who either doesn't have an ultimate or it would be almost impossible to figure out how good their ultimate would be because there's, you know, some kind of circumstance working against it. So for today, that's what we're going to do. And I hope you're excited for it. Let's not waste any more time. I'm going to be pretty brief because again, there's like, what, 160 plus something champions. So I can't go too in depth on every champion. Otherwise, this will be like a 50 minute video. I'll be as fast as I can. Just a moment though, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for today. Gemstone Legends. Gemstone Legends is a mobile three-match RPG rated almost five stars on Android and iOS, which you can download using my link in the description below. Unlike other three-match games, Gemstone Legends gives you different heroes to play with that offer various skills to help you in battle, and they come in five different tiers, common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. Moreover, the goal during puzzle battles is to use your party members in different formations to combo different attacks to get the most results. You can also get a dragon to help you fight in battle by following up your attacks, along with special artifacts that you can equip to set heroes to increase their stats. Once you gather a clan of heroes, you can fight in PvP mode and align with other dragon riders to compete in Guild Wars. They have a Discord server you can join as well to keep tabs on updates and new content featuring daily, weekly, and monthly missions, including tons of different bosses you can fight for extra rewards. If you're interested in checking out Gemstone Legends, you can use my link in the description and get a free starter pack worth 50 bucks containing 500,000 coins, 300 gems, 10 mana and healing elixirs, and a 4-star hero right from the get-go. You can also feel free to add me in-game if you like. Thanks again to Gemstone Legends for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back into it. First off with Aatrox, I'm gonna put him in A tier. Aatrox is ultimate, very solid. Uh, oh, by the way, I should refer, I should probably clarify this. Um, I'm going to evaluate the ultimate within the context of that champion's kit. So I'm also, I'm gonna do like half and half. Like half of it will be how it applies to the champion and the other half would be what would happen if like Silas took it, right? Uh, so it'll be a little ambiguous, uh, but I'll try my best to stay consistent with my reasoning. Uh, Aatrox's ultimate is very solid, provides you with a ton of uh, bonus attack damage, any physical damage dealer would want it. Uh, it also gives you a burst of movement speed at the start. It lasts almost indefinitely as long as you keep getting kills, and it increases your healing by a ton. So any champion who has a lot of healing in their kit, they would benefit quite a bit from Aatrox's ultimate. Ari's ultimate is also, and I'm going to put an S tier actually, I think it is a fantastic ultimate. Ever since the Miscope update, when it got the increased charges upon takedown, you can get in like, you can dash like seven times with one cast of your ultimate. It's really, really good. Uh, Akali? Hmm. I'm gonna say B tier. It works in her kit a lot because she can buy time for the delay to recast the ultimate. But if I were to like consider this on other champions, like for her, Obviously, it's a very devastating ultimate because she has a lot of mobility, she has stealth, she can overwhelm her target. But if I were to think of another character, I don't really find this to be all that, you know, versatile. It's not as all-purpose as like Ari's ultimate. Uh, Akshan's ultimate, I'm going to put in C tier. I think it is, it's not the highlight of his kit. It's a good finishing move, but I would rather have a more, I guess, a more consistent finishing move long range. Like, I actually think Caitlyn is better. Or like a, a global ultimate like Jinx or Ezreal or Draven. I'd rather have that than Akshans. Alistar's ultimate is B tier. It just gives you a crap ton of damage reduction, and it is a crowd control cleanse, but they took away the bonus AD. It actually used to give Alistar bonus AD, and they, it doesn't anymore. If it gave bonus AD, it would actually be really good to have on a Juggernaut or maybe a Diver, but 
Now it's, uh, you know, it's okay. It gives you a lot of tank stats, but we live in an era where there's no shortage of true damage, so not as good as it could be. Amuma's Ultimate A tier. It used to be, I would have put it in S tier, but they nerfed it a lot. I, I don't know how much I want to consider balance patches, since that can change depending on when you watch this video, but in the current state of Amumu's Curse of the Sad Mummy, it's a good ultimate, but there are better full-on hard engage AoE ultimates out there. Okay, next is Nivea. I'll say B tier. It's good for her, like, you know, she really enjoys it, but in terms of control, I would say the fact that it's not immediate and it does damage over time instead of an instantaneous amount of damage, it can be, you know, situational, not really something that I would want to see on every single character. Annie's Tibbers is C tier, or B tier? Hmm, C tier. It's only good because she has her passive. If she didn't have her passive, Tibbers is actually pretty bad. Uh, Aphelios, okay, um, this is hard because there are five variants of the ultimate. If I were to weight the average, like get the weighted average of each one, um, I would put it in, hmm, C tier, he's not really known for his ultimate, it's a good damage nuke, and depending on which one you have, it could actually make or break a team fight. because if you get the Gravitum one, you can get 5 stacks of it, and you can basically root everybody, if you get the Infernum, you do a lot of splash damage, if you get the um, Chakram, or was it Crescentum, you max out your Chakrams, so it's more of a utility ultimate, not really an explosive damage nuke, but um, I still think Aphelios is more known for his weapons. Ash is ultimate S tier, arguably the best long range engage tool, and pick, pick tool in the entire game. Especially because it has such a short cooldown, and Ash can opt for Ability Haste. If Silas stole this ultimate, it would be just as effective. Asol, uh, C tier. It's a straight line nuke that pushes people close to you far away. I would much rather have Lux's ultimate, it's just a lot better. Azir's ultimate A tier, Emperor's Divide. It's definitely contingent on the ability to get in and get out, right? The Shurima Shuffle, uh, having that available. But you know, if you were to choose like any diver, any diver would want to have this ability because it's an AoE insect, essentially. Bard? Ooh. Should I put this in NA? Yeah, I might actually put Bard in Not Applicable. It's, uh, Tempered Fate has... It, that, it can work either for or against you, so we can't really appropriately rate it or accurately rate it without, you know, causing some kind of issue, so I'm going to put it in Not Applicable. Belvet. Uh, I'll say D tier. It's only available on takedown. Now in fairness, that's what's balancing the ultimate. It's a really broken ultimate in terms of like the steroid that it gives, but Belvet, mm, the ultimate, no, I don't think, it really only works on her. I don't think anyone else would want it because she's the only one who can break the attack speed cap anyway with that lethal tempo. Bliss Crank, C tier. You know, it's a damage nuke and it is a disruption tool, but doesn't really do that much else. Brand, it's also a, I'm gonna put Brand's Conflagration in D tier. It's again, only because Brand has his passive. It's heavily contingent on his passive. Um, again, I don't know how much I want to go into like if the passive is involved, because obviously if we do include, let's say Annie's passive, then Tibbers is like B tier, A tier. It's like really good instant engage. Uh, and even then though, like you have to prime it beforehand. So I wouldn't consider the, the fact that it's not instantly available would work, 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 yeah, can't speak. Uh, I would consider the fact that it's not instantly available to work against it. Um, Brahm's ultimate, B tier, it's respectable. Again, if we were thinking about all the team fight engage ultimates, there are definitely better ones out there. Caitlyn is B tier. It's a strictly better version of Akshan. Uh, it doesn't do as much damage, and it, but it, you know, it's not as, you can, you know, you can't be blocked by minions or turrets. Camille's ultimate is A tier. It is literally impossible to escape unless you force Camille out of her own ultimate with like a Tristana Buster Shot or at least in Dragon's Kick. Uh, if she's in there, there is no way you can escape that ultimate for the duration. It's arguably... it's pretty unfair, not gonna lie. Cassiopeia's is B tier. It's an AoE delayed stun, but only if it's facing them. Uh, for her it works because most champions want to be looking at her anyway. Uh, though it's not so much. Chogoth's ultimate is A tier, instant true damage nuke, and it, you can use it to stack up your HP. So every time Silas steals his ultimate, he's very happy. Corky's Missile Barrage, mm, C tier. Could be better. It's just, you know, it's just long range damage. It, it depends on the champion you're playing. If you have, if you want to go for a more poke centric neutral game, then by all means, but yeah. Darius's ultimate is C tier. Uh, Noxian Guillotine is cool, 
but it is predicated on how much damage he can or how many stacks he can get on his uh, passive. Dinah's Moonfall, A tier. Oh, this ability is broken. Not for everybody, but it is a very broken ability. Mundo's Maximum Dosage. Okay, so this is after Mundo got his like quote unquote mid scope, not really mid scope, but a gameplay rework. So it used to give bonus AD uh, based on your missing health. Or not your missing health, your bonus health. But they took that out to factor in Mundo's new passive uh, on his E. Now I would say it's more of like a C tier ultimate. It's not that great. Not really that great. You need to spell, you need to itemize a ton of HP to make it good. And even then, there are better ones out there. Draven's Whirling Death is B tier. Long range damage nuke, kind of like Caitlyn, just a variant of it. Echoes Chrono Break, B tier. The fact that you don't have exactly full control over it, it is. A lot of people don't like Echoes Ultimate since it's like a get out of jail free card. But, you know, when we're thinking of like the most powerful ultimates in the game, it's definitely not his. Elise, not applicable. Evelyn, A tier. Thinking about like, you know, instant damage nuke or like, you know, one shot. Uh, she's definitely up there, and it is also an escape. It doubles as an escape. So you can assassinate someone, make yourself untargetable, so you reset tower aggro, and get out of there. Ezreal, B tier, same reasons as Draven. Fiddlesticks, uh, A tier. Mostly because the teleport on the ultimate is associated with the ultimate. So you can actually take that out of Fiddle's kit. Although, then again, he kind of does depend on the AoE fear from his Q to make the most of it. And it's not really something you can use on demand. It's only for engage, not really for counter engage. Uh, mm, B tier. Naturally, given the nature of ultimates being the best ability, or at least close to the best ability in a champion's kit, there really isn't going to be any in F tier that I can think about. But I'll still try my best to not make like the B tier or A tier oversaturated. Fiora's grand challenge. For her, it's bro yeah. I'm gonna put an A tier. This this ability is whole. Oh, this ability ruins people, and it can make or break so many team fights with the AOE heal. Definitely good. Fizz is C tier. Chum the Waters is not. It's not great. It's prone to missing a lot, and you do have to shoot it from a far distance to get the maximum damage. Galio, uh, C tier. A little too situational to be better than B or A. I'd say Gangplank's ultimate is A tier, if not S tier. I'm actually just putting S tier. If we factor in the Silver Serpents with it... Oh no, actually you can't because that's not associated with the ability. A tier. Uh, a global wide range damage AoE thing. Like Gangplank's ultimate is fantastic. Especially if you can build AP. Garen's Demacian Justice, S tier. This thing is like a point and click, you die. It's max. Or it's missing health true damage, which is basically percent health true damage. What do you do? There's no counterplay. Nar. When you can get it, it's S tier. Nar's ultimate is broken. It is busted. Like, holy crap, this ability is broken. Um, I might put it in A tier just for the sheer fact that you need the Mega Form for it. Uh, although, if we consider it like how Silas does and it's just available on demand, then it'd be S tier. Gragas B tier. It could be better, but it could also work against you. You can make a mistake and actually rescue or save the enemy team or hurt your team. So, yeah. Graves is uh, A tier. It's a pretty good ultimate. Um, actually, no, I'll put it down here. I kind of put it next to like the long range projectiles. Although it is more instantaneous and does more damage if you hit the uh, point blank version. I'll still put it in B tier. It's not as game changing. Gwen, B tier. It's just damage. Hecarim, A tier. It's a fantastic long range engage. Does a lot of damage. Uh, or not really damage, but like the fear duration is good. It's a gap closer. Or you could just use it to escape, and it's unstoppable too. Heimerdinger is interesting. I'm actually going to put him in not applicable since it empowers his existing abilities, doesn't really make anything else better. So we might just leave that as is. Alawi, on her, it is the most destructive force of destiny you've ever seen in your life. On other champions, mm, even then though, it's like Alawi, she really relies, she's more of a Punisher champion. She heavily depends on her team or the enemy team making a mistake when fighting her or not respecting her threat radius, so I'll put her in C tier. Irelia. Hmm. B tier. If we include the resets on Q and the fact that it is effectively a, uh, a zone control ability, uh, it's definitely really good. Ivern, C tier. Daisy is inconsistent, summons are always like that. 
Janna will put her in A tier, arguably the best disengage tool in the game, and it heals. Jarvan's ultimate also in A tier, fantastic. Jax will put it in... well if we include the uh, auto attack passive. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is also factoring in uh, the new mid scope. Well, it's still in the works, but the new mid scope would be would make this probably like B or A tier. But I'm gonna treat it almost like Alistar for the time being, except you get a bit more damage in exchange for not as much resilience. Jace not applicable. Jin's ultimate is B tier along with all the other big ones. Same with Jinx. Actually, if I had to think of which global ultimate deserves to be an A tier, I'm gonna put it Jin probably. Kaisa is B tier. It's a good ability when you're in advantage, not so much when you're in disadvantage. Callista is C tier. The fact that she greatly depends on a, on a support or whoever she's black spirit to to make any effect out of it. Yeah, not so much. Karma and not applicable. Karthus is S tier. His ultimate is a sin. It is a war crime. It is everything wrong with League of Legends game design. <laughs> uh, Kassadin, I'm gonna put Riftwalk in A tier. This might, this might be a hot take. Some people think this ultimate is broken and any champion would want to have it, but in reality it's just a dash. It's like a Ezreal Arcane Shift, kind of, or like a flash that has a bit of damage. Not the most essential. Like, I would still think Ari. Well, okay, I put Ari in S tier and cast it in, in A tier. That's because Ari's ultimate is available right from the start. It's good from the beginning. Cast it in level 1 or rank 1 ultimate is not bad, but it's not great either. You need level 2 or rank 3. Katarina. Mm, C tier. It, it's. It's only good on her, like or like it, it would a champion would need a lot of mobility and also the fact that it can reset. Okay, so Cat is strange. How much would I say? It's really actually her ultimate's not even that good. Now that I think about it, her, it's not really her ultimate that people are that afraid of. It's the rest of her kit, so it's not that great. Kale's ultimate is A tier. Invincibility, unconditional invincibility, unconditional on demand invincibility. If she casts it on her allies, they get to do whatever the hell they want. If she casts on herself, she can't really do much, but still, it's an A tier ability. So this tier list was kind enough to separate Kane or Kane's blue and red form, as well as the regular one, uh, from each other, which is awesome, because I did want to compare the different forms. And that also includes, uh, who else? There's one other champion where it's like different ultimates. I forget exactly who. Anyways, Kane, uh, base ultimate is B tier. It's passable, right? It's uh, it is like what two and a half seconds to like three seconds of untarget ability, so that kind of protection and stalling is always really good to have. Red cane will put in A tier. It is more circumstantial than uh, blue cane in my opinion, but of course the fact that he heals definitely good. Uh, blue cane I'm gonna put in S tier. It has what double the range, double double the cast range. Does a ton of damage. This ability is disgusting. It's Partly why Blue Cane is so obnoxious, because he can dash and make himself untargetable for, like, what? From, I think, like, seven, eight hundred units away? Kind of stupid. Cannon's ultimate is S tier. If I take, like, a Moomoo's ultimate, put into Cannon, yes, you do need the, um, it's not instantaneous per se, because you have, uh, you gotta get the three stacks, but it's basically instantaneous. The three stacks comes in, like, what, half a second. So, Cannon's ultimate is, it is a super ultimate for a reason. Kha'Zix, hmm. B tier. People like his ultimate more for the evolutions, not really the uh, stealth, and it's situational. Kindra's ultimate is S tier. This ultimate is, oh my god, this ultimate. Basically take what I said about Kale, and apply it to everybody. Yes, it can save the enemy team, and it does create kind of like a uh, sudden death, kind of sudden death situation, but oh my god, this ability is just unfair. The fact that you can cast it on demand, you used to be able to cast it remotely, like like, currently, Kindred can only cast it on themselves, but they used to be able to cast it like from 500 units away. It was kind of stupid. Pled, I'm gonna put it in a C tier. It's a, the most inconsistent travel global ultimate. It has the team fight pressure with like, you know, speeding up everybody, but it's just the fact that you can't control when to stop it or who it attaches to that makes it not the best. Kogma is B tier. It's a pretty good sniping ability, not too bad. Kisante. Uh, mm. I'm actually, it's a hot take. I'm gonna put it in C tier because it's a hyper specific ultimate that literally only works on him. And maybe. No, actually, that's it. it 
it's more for the transformation, the all-out transformation. So it's equivalent to, actually, should I put it in not applicable then? Because it's not really a, well, if we just factor the insect part, then yeah, it's a C-tier ability. LeBlanc. Now, assuming we create some scenario where you could duplicate any ability you want, then it would be obviously S tier. If not, it would be the best ability in the game. Um, well, not the best ability, it depends on the champion. But for her, actually, yeah, screw it. We'll entertain that thought, S tier. Because for her, it is it allows her to recast any ability she wants in her kit, which can work very well situationally. It's just that currently LeBlanc is kind of a sh champion, and I can get into that more later, but yeah. Alright, uh, I think we're at the halfway point, right? Hopefully, because this video is going to be like 40 minutes long. Alright, Lee Sin. Dragon Rage is going to be B tier. It's a good ability, but you kind of really need the ability to reposition yourself. Or you need to be able to reposition yourself, and not every champion can. Uh, Leona, mm, B tier. It's a solid lockdown tool. There are better ones out there. Lilia, uh, A tier. It's an AoE teamfight ultimate that's really only balanced by the fact that it's on her. Like Silas, if Silas can find some way to damage everyone on the enemy team, then that would be a much more powerful ultimate. Lissandra is S tier. It's Zanya's Hourglass or Lockdown, whichever one you want, and it's point and click, so you can't stop it. It's instant if you use it on Zanya's, on yourself, uh, and it's point and click if you use it on an enemy. Beautiful ultimate. Lucian. I'm gonna put in B tier. It can theoretically do more damage than Graves, Akshan, uh, Caitlyn, Ezreal, Draven, but it also can be blocked, so. Lulu, Wild Growth, A tier, no contest, Lux, B tier, it's a damage nuke, Malphite, S tier, stupidly, it's, it is the hallmark of a super ultimate, basically. Malzahar, S tier, Malzahar is literally defined by his ultimate. That's how stupid it is. Maokai, I'll put it in B tier, it's gotten better, um, it definitely got better, since it gives like the bonus movement speed after the he got his mid scope. Aside from that, hmm. I don't know. There's like a lot of straight line team fight control ultimates in the game. Uh, I would say Maokai is definitely one of the more interesting ones because people say, oh, it's too slow, you can run away from it. That's not the point. The point is that it's a zoning ultimate. People thought like Renata's ultimate is bad because it travels so slow. While it travels slow, you have to be aware of the fact that it's covering X amount of area and you can't be in that X amount of area, so it's actually not that bad. Mastery's Highlander is C tier. Or, mm, yeah, really C tier. It's heavily contingent on strictly auto attacks or on hit effect champions. It's like maybe Kogma will want it, but no one else. Or Jax, perhaps, but everyone else, not really. Misfortune Bolt Time, B tier. Mordekaiser, A tier. Uh, Mordekaiser can break apart team fights. He is the number one counter to Yumi for a reason. Morgana, B tier. It's a delayed Amumu ultimate. I'd much rather have Amumu ultimate. Uh, Nami's Tidal Wave, B tier. Not the most threatening of the straight line massive team fight control ultimates out there. Nasus's Steroid will be A tier for purely for the armor and magic resist and the health. It's like a lot of stats. Probably the most must stats for. Like, I would say it's better than Aatrox. Actually, you know what? In retrospect, I may put Aatrox down in B tier. Because I think Nasus is a little bit better. Nautilus, S tier. Point and click, long range, lockdown that chases you. Like, what more could you ask for? There might not be an F tier. Let's just get rid of the F tier, actually, just because I don't think it's necessary. Nico is a delayed version of Amumu's ultimate. It does more damage. But I still think Amumu's is better. Nidalee not applicable. Nila is a... Uh, if I put Diana here, I'll put Nila here. Nocturne is an 8 tier ultimate. I actually think that the blindness or the darkness is more pivotal for the usage of it than the actual dash itself. I think it would be fantastic for like sowing discord or creating that kind of... What is it called? Insidious pressure. As in, like, you always have to be aware of the fact that suddenly everything can go dark and you get engaged on. Nunu, I will say A tier. Now, I know I said, like, oh, it's a delayed damage nuke or whatever, but if you think about it, Nunu, it, well, Nunu doesn't do any dam uh, any crowd control, but it creates an immediate sense of urgency for the enemy team, like, oh crap, we have to get out of here. And I think it's pretty devastating, even if you can't 
get like the full channel even if it gets interrupted or something. The fact that you create that much pressure in such a wide area can disrupt a lot of the enemy team's tempo, and I think that's why I would put it in A tier. Olaf, S tier. I don't need to explain why. Oriana, A tier. It is very dependent- okay, it's like the Annie thing where it's like, if you don't have a ball, then you can only cast on yourself. In which case, no, it's basically like a Diana and Nila ultimate. Orn, an A tier ultimate, very good. Pantheon, A tier, it's, I would say, the best. Other, other than Twisted Fate, it's the best ultimate in terms of like global roaming pressure. Poppy, C tier, it's a bad ultimate. Pike, um, hmm, okay. Highly controversial. I'd actually put it in B tier. I know I said this is like one of the stupidest ultimates in the game in the past, but if I isolated it from his kit, it's uh, it's a very hit or miss type ultimate and it's not the most consistent. I would say you would want any any of these ultimates more than his. Kiana, A tier. An assassin who can do AoE damage. Quinn, um, C? The fast tempo is good, but the fact that it only works out of combat makes it a glorified Moby Boots. Actually, I may even put it in D tier. Because, like, it's good on Quinn, but like, even on Quinn, I feel like Quinn just... Quinn would love any other ultimate besides her own. Rakan, A tier, very very fantastic ultimate. It got nerfed by the fact that you there's like a delay on it, so you can't like activate a mid grand entrance, but I still think it's a fantastic ultimate. Remus, the new one, it's okay. It's not bad, not great. Rek'Sai, Void Rush is good. I'll put it in B tier. Rel's ultimate is... Is... Nah, no, you would never take Rel's ultimate before, over like, you know, Mumu, for example. I love how Mumu has become the benchmark for any like circular AoE crowd control ultimate. Renata, A tier. It is arguably the best. If I had to choose between Sona, Nami, or Renata, like the wave type ultimates, Renata is definitely the best. Renekton is B tier. Nasus's ultimate is better. Renekton is good on Renekton because he has Fury, but if your champion does have Fury, then it doesn't work. It's just HP at that point. Rengar, same thing for him. I'm actually going to put his in C tier because with imagine Rengar's ultimate without the passive. Now, in terms of like how Silas takes it, uh, Silas is allowed to jump, I believe, but even then, it's like not that great. Riven, I'll put it in probably B tier. Rumble, S tier. This ultimate is cracked. This thing is like a, fiddle, a ranged fiddlesticks ultimate. That's basically what it is. Rise, D tier. Realm Warp is... Oh, Realm Warp. You were, that's, Realm Warp is half of the reason why current Rise is just unplayable. Or it's like, it's just... it. Uh, just bring back Desperate Power, please. Desperate Power was so good for him. I know it's a stat boost, but like, come on. It would be so much better. Uh, Infernal Trigger is B tier. It would be S tier if it was available on demand, but it's not. It's a slightly better Katarina Ultimate. Alright, a few more to go. This is a long video. Holy crap, I was not anticipating it to be this long. Sejuani's ultimate is A tier. It's a long range uh, lockdown. It's slightly more consistent than Leona, but not as good as Nautilus. Uh, it also has that like AoE, AoE effect. Senna's Dawning Shadow, B tier. Seraphine's, uh, what is it called again? Encore? Is it Encore? Yeah. Encore is A tier. Set is... Mmm, B tier, it's a very situational ultimate. Shaco, hallucinate, A tier. Imagine if Master Yi had this, or like some other on-hit champion, or like imagine if an AD carry had hallucinate, holy crap, that'd be terrifying. Like, imagine if Kogma took Shaco's ultimate and replaced Living Artillery. I think he would, any, any Kogma would do that. Shen's ultimate, S tier. It's a beautiful ultimate, and it's such a well-designed and fair one, in my opinion. But I might be biased. Shivana's dragon form is... D tier because you would only be getting a little bit of extra health. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, basically. Singed, I would actually put in A tier because the stats are pretty absurd. I believe you get like 4,000 gold worth of stats on Singed, and the fact that it's balanced is because it's on Singed. 
Scion's ultimate is in C tier. It's, you know, anyone who watches boss, they're going to want to kill me because of all the all the different applications that Scion's ultimate has. But in reality, his ultimate is probably the worst part of his kit. Like, it's horribly inconsistent. Sivir is A tier, fantastic teamfight ultimate for momentum and mobility, and it now extends itself, kind of like Aatrox, um, which is awesome. Skarner, also A tier, is the best point and click lockdown ability, I would say, because not only can you suppress the target, but you can drag them along. So it's like Malzahar, but actually I'll put it in S tier. I actually think Skarner's ultimate is very underrated, or it's the only thing that makes Skarner viable, in my opinion. Sona's Crescendo is B tier, it's pretty good, uh, not as good as Renata or Seraphine. Soraka's uh, Wish, S tier, it's like reverse Karthus ultimate. Swain, B tier. Okay, no, ever since the Midscope, I would actually call it A tier because it can last indefinitely, as long as you're in combat. Silas, his ultimate is S tier, it's literally every other ultimate in the game. Like, Silas's ultimate is every other ultimate, yeah, so of course it's gonna be S tier. Or I might put it in not applicable, but honestly, just all the different applications of it, and the fact that he has a kit that works so much better than like for some other champions. Like imagine, like Silas makes certain champions' ultimates better on him than on any other champ. Like Nico's ultimate is better on Silas, or uh, you know Nas's ultimate is better on Silas. Mundo's ultimate, not Mundo's ultimate. What's another champion? Like even Renekton's ultimate, the AP damage is insane. Syndra is um, C tier because you need to stack a lot of Dark Spheres ahead of time. And even if I were to only think about it on Syndra, no, actually, after the buff, it did get better. It does have the execute now, so. Tom Kench, C tier. The new Devourer, it's okay, it's not great. Not really that good though. Talia is B tier. It's a pretty good ultimate. Uh, not my favorite global roaming ultimate, but again, not the worst. Talon is B tier. It's really only there. The damage from the ultimate itself, or I guess the stealth and movement speed is good to have. It's a decent utility ultimate. It's mostly there just to like maximize his uh, bleed stacks, but apart from that, I like it. Tarek's ultimate is A tier. It does suffer from being difficult to, or it does suffer from the fact that it's not instantaneous, so I would choose Kindred's ultimate over Tarek, but this can be game changing in certain fights, so you can't put it in B tier, I feel like it would be a disservice to it. Teemo is gonna be S tier, hear me out. This ability is pressure in the late game, it forces everyone to buy oracles on the enemy team, but if they buy oracles, they don't have as many access to wards, like they can't get Farsight. They can't get regular trinkets, so they have reduced vision. And in the late game, like I said, this is the bane of any squishy champion's existence. Like, Teemo's mushrooms are the only thing making Teemo viable. They're so good. It's a 5 minute ward. Teemo's mushrooms are disgusting. Thrash? Probably B tier. Yeah, pretty fair. Tristana, I'm gonna put it in C tier. It's a good peel ultimate, but it's only because Tristana needs the peel. Aside from that, not really. And most melee champions or even other ranged champions won't want it. Trundle is A tier. Subjugate is good. It is situational, but I still think it's, it's a pretty dang good ability. Trinimere S tier. Holy crap. Oh my god. Imagine like Camille, not Camille, Camille's not an example. Imagine like an ADC. Let's just go back to the Kogma example, or Master Yi. Well, he does depend on Highlander. I, I have to remember that if you take out their ultimate, it kind of kills the champion's identity. But like, you know, Kogma with Trinimir's ultimate? Oh my lord. Oh god, this ultimate's a crime. I really cannot wait for them to balance the thing. I hope they they can't remove it, because that's what Trinimir is. But, I mean, he is on the uh, list for VGUs. Twist of Fate, S tier ultimate. Vision of the entire enemy team, including invisible champions, and you get to teleport anywhere you want. It is, I don't need to say anymore. Twitch, B tier, it's okay. Udir, not applicable, or if we just think about Wing More Storm, maybe C tier. Urgot, B tier, it's a good, cool ability, but 
If I put Pike's execute here, I'm going to put Urgot's execute here. Varus, A tier. It's a good team fighting gauge ultimate. Vayne's final hour is um, mm, B tier on her, C tier on anyone else. So I will put it in C tier. Like Twitch, the steroid from Twitch is a lot better than on Vayne. Or the steroid from Twitch's ultimate is a lot better than the steroid of Vayne's ultimate. Vagar, B tier. It's only good because Vagar can infinitely stack AP on other, ma on other mages, not so much. Velkos, mm, kind of like, no, the actual laser itself doesn't really do that much damage. It's the passive, so I might actually put this in. No, it's more beneficial than, it's more consistent at least than these two, so I'll put it in C tier. Vex, kind of the same thing where, well, if you gave this to an assassin or like a diver, this would be a good ultimate, so I might actually give this A tier. Because in her case, it's good because it gives her an easy way into the enemy team to then fear everybody, but you don't necessarily have to have that kind of crowd control. You could just have, you know, or like, you know, some juggernaut or something like that. It could be really good for them. Viego is S tier. No, no, we're just talking about the heartbreaker itself, not the passive. In that case, maybe B tier. No, C tier. Victor, B tier. Not bad. Vi, A tier. It's a point and click lockdown. It's kind of similar to Nautilus where it chases the target. The only difference is that if Vi picks a bad target, then she's screwed, right? Whereas Nautilus, he doesn't have to commit to that target. He could just use his ultimate ahead of time and be like, okay, we'll see. Is it a safe engage? Then I'll go in. If it's not, then I won't. All right, almost done. Vladimir is an A tier ultimate. It is actually not dependent on the other parts of his kit. It is a pr pretty good standalone ultimate. It increases all damage to champions by 10%, and it does a lot of damage afterwards and heals you for a lot. Volibear. Uh, B tier. I still think Nasus is better than Volley's, because Volley's a bit more situational. Warwick, A tier. It is not as good as Skarner or Malzahar, but it's still pretty good. It's like kind of like a single target version of Hecarim's ultimate. Wukong is A tier. It's a uh, another good AoE teamfight ultimate and it's two disruptions. So I might put this here, but at the same time, eh. Well, if you don't have Wukong's clone, you only get one or two knockups, not four. So yeah, probably A tier. Zaya is... If we just talk, think about the untarget ability, it would just be B tier. It's a good self-defense ultimate, or actually C tier. Without the feathers, uh, the feather recall, it's a C tier ultimate. It's kind of like Tristana where it's like, it's a good defensive ability, but you don't want your ultimate to be a defensive ability per se, or if you want it to be defensive ability, it better be a dang good one. Since, or like a game changing one like uh, Kindred. Now I, I wouldn't really consider like Zaya or Tristana, because if you think about it, mobility, like Ari's ultimate, Ari's ultimate is a is an offensive or defensive ability, whereas this is purely defensive. Zerath is B tier. It's a good long range snipe. Shinzhao is C tier. Yasuo is I would say A tier. If you had an AOE knockoff, like let's say if Orn had Yasuo's ultimate, that'd be a very interesting one. Uh, but I think Yasuo's ultimate is a very good ability, even individually. Yona is B tier. Or no, I might put it in A tier actually. Hmm, no, that's no, I'm putting it in B tier. York is C tier. It's heavily inconsistent. Um the maidens are weird. The maiden yeah, the maidens maiden is really weird. Yumi's ultimate is A tier because she can attach it to any champion and they get it essentially so i might actually put that in s tier holy crap no yumi's ultimate is s tier no they did nerf it though they did nerf it a lot so we'll just keep it in a tier then zach's ultimate is b tier another one of those disperse or dispersion ultimates which can work for or against you depending on how it works zed's ultimate is a tier like imagine a champion with point and click abilities having zed's ultimate like Pantheon was that ultimate, or I don't know, uh, freaking Camille was that ultimate. Honestly, yeah, no, just imagine if Camille had that ultimate. That'd be, that'd be, I, I don't want to think about it actually. <laughs> Zeri's ultimate is C tier, not 
that great. Um, well, the inf even if the infinite movement stacking thing, if you were to apply it on like auto attacks, not like exclusively burst fire. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Uh, then in that case, probably B tier. Ziggs is B tier. It's a good long range nuke. Zillion's ultimate is S tier. Correct usage of this ability is another one of those like game changers, and it's more consistent than Kale's in my opinion. Zoe is C tier. It's only on her. It's really only on her. Maybe you can apply this to like a poke champion like Zareth or something that'd be good, but no C tier. And finally, Zyra. We'll put it in B tier. Okay, so that's the list. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree. I know for a fact that I contradicted myself like a million times just because tier lists are like that and I really apologize. Hey, there's 160 champions, okay? I can't be hyper consistent with everything, but uh, it was a lot of fun. I want to do something a bit more lighthearted since uh, I've done a lot of long form content, like, you know, scripted narrative content. And I know these aren't like the most popular videos out there since they're a dime a dozen and I'm more known for my scripted, I guess, professionally narrated content. But uh, I wanted to do this because I thought it would be a lot of fun. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter at VarsVerm, join my Discord server, and check out my uh, other Tila videos, which I will put on screen somehow uh, if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.